Have you ever loved a flavor so much you just wanted to bottle it up? We're meeting siblings who are doing just that, blending family foods and traditions with entrepreneurial spirit to preserve their cultural heritage and give others a taste of it too. Growing up, we spent a lot of time in the kitchen and a lot of time around the dinner table, and the star of every meal was our mom's cilantro and ginger chutney. And one day, a light bulb went off, and we thought, okay, this is it. It's the cilantro and ginger chutney. Let's start making this. Meet the Sajadis. Mom Fatima is known as the flavor queen, always packing a little more spice. Put a little bit more than you think. In her traditional Afghan fare. Daughters Sheila and Yasmin are the entrepreneurs behind the food brand Maza, serving up chutneys, sauces, and dips inspired by the flavor queen herself. She's like a mad scientist in the kitchen. She's always <laughs> been the one to try different experiments and things. She's always, you know, drying certain herbs. She's very adventurous, I would say, in her cooking. Fatima, what part of Afghanistan did you grow up in? I was born in Kabul and I was raised in Kabul, Afghanistan. And I came to United States in the late 70s. I don't know much about Afghan culture. And yeah. this is what I love doing, is sitting down and eating food with people because I, you know, really believe that our culture is, you know, ingrained into the foods that we make. Hello, friends. I'll start over. What is chutney? Chutney is a condiment that we grew up eating at our house. It was something that was always on the kitchen table. We call it the magic green sauce. It's made up of all these elements. So we have the cilantro, fresh ginger, fresh garlic, lemon, and jalapeno. How did you get your recipe for your chutney? <laughs> I was drinking ginger tea and I bought this really beautiful ginger and it just looks so great. And then I said, what if I put some in the chutney? So I had ginger to mine, and it was just like, voila, this is so good. <laughs> it just made such a big difference. Is there a certain way to chopping it? Yes, so it's just a rough chop, so we're gonna put everything in the food processor. Rough chop, that's my nickname. So we started making it in her kitchen, 25 tiny jars at a time and selling them at farmer's markets. How did people react to it? A lot of people didn't know what chutney was. They were wondering if it was spicy, is there curry in it? What are the different flavor components in it? It was very important to get people to try it. When we would give out samples, people would just be so surprised and so like, oh my gosh, we've never had anything taste like this before. This is so delicious. Though some may be unfamiliar, chutney is a very popular condiment in much of the world. Chutney can be chunky or smooth, sweet, savory or spicy, Yummy. and can contain a variety of different ingredients, fruits, nuts, vinegar, herbs, and spices. Most often linked to India, it also has a rich history in Afghanistan, where chutney is a mealtime staple. <laughs> you don't have this memorized? You've never, you don't measure stuff? It's not about recipes, it's about relationships. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are such good friends, it oh. sounds like your siblings. <laughs> Garlic, ginger. Ooh, smells really nice. good. Nice. Tell me a little bit about the Afghan culture. Whatever we do, we need to have food. Even if we play a game of sports, we bring food. Am I doing this right? Great, okay. great. I get so nervous. There's three women looking at me. <laughs> Blitz it up. Blitz it up. We have a really big family, so there's always a reason to get together and have a meal. And when you cook for that many people, you can't cook alone. What kind of consistency are we looking for? Just a little more. Oh. Every Sunday, it's a standing day that our family would get together at the lake. 
They bring like a giant flat top on the back of a truck and <laughs> they grill beef kebabs, chicken kebabs. And that's the thing with our culture, it's like all about abundance. It's not just one small meal, it's like five different kinds of rice and then two different meats and veggies and bread, always. Now maybe it's just a little more. Okay. <laughs> and my uncles all fly kites and the cousins fly kites. You're talking about flying kites. It gets really serious. They use kite string that has glass in it to cut the kites of the other people. Oh, like flying kite a kite on, yes. Kite <laughs> fight, that's what they call it, kite fighting. Oh, okay. So when they fight, how long does it take to make the other person lose their kite? When you lose your kite, that person now is to like walk and retreat. Walk shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That looks good. Put it in the Vitamix next. Quick question. Why don't we just put it all in the Vitamix right away? The ginger is really tough, and then the garlic sometimes doesn't break down like the consistency of the pepper and the cilantro. It's beautiful. It looks great. Yes. Good job. Thanks. It's made with all raw ingredients. So everything is really fresh tasting, really flavorful. Gives it that nice, really vibrant color too, because it is a fresh condiment. I love to put chutney on rice, korma, add this to your fish tacos or add this to your eggs. And I love putting it on one too. Talk to me more about the mantu. Mantu is like a dumpling. It used to be like a weekend food, and then it became a street food because everybody just loves it. Mom, what are the directions? We need to chop stuff. Yasmin can do the ginger, and she loves the cilantro, and you can do the onions. Great. This ginger smells so good. Do you use a lot of fresh ginger? Absolutely. Fresh herbs? And my mom too, she grows her own ginger. It's like this young ginger that, you know, it's not as spicy. I love that. It looks delicious. I feel kind of like I'm in your kitchen now. I'm one of the sisters. You're one of the sisters now. Finally. Can I get some stuff from you guys? Yeah. yeah. Sure. What do you need? I need a little bit of garlic. Who's what on else? Garlic. <laughs> Who's on the garlic? <laughs> Who's supposed to be on the garlic? I'll take ginger. Sorry, Mom. Whoops. Get the garlic going. It's my Favorite dish because the smell of the dumplings cooking. It just reminds me of being at home. And it's one of those dishes where you need a lot of people to help. Mm -hmm. So whenever we make it, all the aunties come over. They each help. They each have a job. Fatima, I have the garlic whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. Make, making sure the filling is spiced enough, each aunt will taste the filling and be like, no, it needs more of this, and then it'll go down the line, and then someone else will add to it, and then someone else will add to it, and then it'll be the most amazing thing because all of these hands touched it in the kitchen. So we're gonna grab one of the dumplings, and we're gonna add a teaspoon of filling inside. You want to grab a little bit of water and trace the outside of the okay. dumpling. So what you, when you guys are making these, what do you guys talk about? Gossip. Mm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what kind of gossiping do you guys gossip about? When is the next party? Who's getting married? Just this, this guy doesn't have any kids. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back off, mom. OK? <laughs> I'm working on that, I kind of. <laughs> I think the other thing about this dish that's sometimes surprising to people is it's a dumpling, which isn't typically something that people would associate to like 
Afghan cuisine. Hmm. Why do you think? It has a lot of different influences from other cultures, which I think is really interesting. I mean, just think where the country is too, right? Mm -hmm. It was like this epicenter of all these business and trades that would come through. They leave a little bit of themselves there. Exactly. And that's what I really love about food, right? Yeah. It is like this canvas that we use to kind of paint this picture of how we're all connected together. Yep, I love that. The greatest hack for this dumpling dish is using wonton wrappers. Oh. That's what we use. And then you don't have to make your own dough. It saves a lot of time. Is there any special pleating? Everyone kind of has their own little folding techniques. Okay. She makes it really beautiful with her folding techniques. Here you go. Oh, okay, oh boy. Or you can just fold it in half. Yes, we call it. You can fold it whichever way you like. That was so nice. fast, and we used all of the filling and all of the wrapper. Right, that yes. never happens. It's it was really meant impressive. to be. We named our company Maza. Has a dual meaning in Farsi, so that meant a lot to us. It means like perfect moment or that golden hour when you're hanging out with your friends. But it also means flavor, and our mom is the queen of flavor, and we wanted to make sure that that came through in everything that we create. I feel like when people hear about Afghanistan, or if we're from Afghanistan, they go to a place of war or turmoil or a sad place, which there is all those things, but then there's also a really beautiful part of the culture that not a lot of people know about. And I think that's part of Maza is sharing that piece of our beautiful culture with other people through food. That was the same experience we grew up with. You know, I think with like even refugees, immigrant families, like the first thing that we get to share with people is our food. Yeah. It looks amazing. I'm ready to Thank eat. Thank you. How do we start? The guest always eats first. Oh. So let's start with the rice. For the chutney, like, do you put it just to the side and then slowly incorporate it in? Or you just, how do you guys do it? It has their own kind of way of, of incorporating it. OK. You can have fun with it. Let's eat. Try it. See if you like. I love it. This is delicious. Thank you. No shijan. No shijan means bon appetit, basically. Mm. May it nourish your soul. You are so right when it's like you're saying flavor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm having a flavor bomb in my mouth, right? It's like a hug on a plate. Whenever my mom cooks for me, that's what it feels like. I get a little emotional thinking about what, you know, you ladies are doing, and it's like, you're taking your mom's legacy and now you're passing it down. So you're literally bottling it up and making sure that when people look back, they remember that, no, this came from mom. Fatima, what does it mean to you to see your family, to see your girls working together? I I, I didn't think they will do it when they said they're gonna do it. But they <laughs> you know, you have that doubt that you can say it out loud, but... <laughs> It's, it's amazing. To have something this, you know, special to us and our family just means a lot to keep, keep it going and have the new generation know what that is, what our culture is, and just keep it alive within our community. What does it feel for you to know that this was a, a sauce or a dip you make for your family and now across the country people are eating this? It, it just gives you that closeness. The more people eat it, the, you know, the more you feel like they're they are part of you, they're part of your family, they're, I'm very happy, very proud. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for opening your story to me and then opening your family and having me come along. So this means so much to me. I'm not gonna ever forget this. With Mazaz chutneys on the scene, more folks can savor a bit of Afghan culture. Finding familiar foods and ingredients at the store is a big deal. And markets themselves hold a special place in many cultures, like the Mexican Mercado. Hi, hey, Melissa. Hi. Uh, Good to see you. you. Good to see you. Welcome to El Burrito. 
Hey, my nice brother nice Tomas. Tomas, nice, nice to meet you. you. My sister Suzanne. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Meet the Silvas, the second generation behind the iconic El Burrito Mercado on St. Paul's West Side. Melissa is the CEO. I'm the boss. No. <laughs> Suzanne runs the numbers. I you make, make sure, sure everything keeps, keeps running. Tomas operates the food truck. So I've got the food truck, I've got a trailer. And together with their niece, Analita, and a huge team, they bring Mexicans and Latinos a taste of home. Melissa, how long have you had this place? Uh, this location, we've been here for about 27 years. My oh. parents actually started the Mercado across the street in a small 800 square foot location. And then in 1995, they moved here and they implemented kind of a whole Mercado concept. What's a Mercado? It's a market. So in, in Mexico, they have a market, basically a giant, usually indoor, sometimes they're outdoor markets. And that's kind of what we wanted this to, I guess, you know, reflect. Represent, yep. In a mercado is included, you know, restaurant, meats, lots of produce, bakery, home supplies. And it's like a one-stop shop. There you go. You know, yeah. it's like a, you take Target, Home Depot, <laughs> Cubs food, yeah. and it's like all becomes one, right? Yeah. And you're like, I don't really have to go anywhere. It's like everything I can do is right here. Yeah. What does it mean to the community for you guys to be here? I think it's convenient for them to be able to come here and get the products that they need. And even, you know, non-Hispanic people also. And back when my parents started in 1979, accessibility to products and ingredients for home cooking was minimal. And so when they did this, my dad, even to get the products, was taking trips to Chicago and filling up, you know, what started out as a station wagon, then a minivan, then a van, then a little truck. You know, now we're shipping in truckloads of tortillas yeah. and frijoles yeah. and rice and all this other stuff. So it's, it's been really cool to see the evolution and being a part of that. Tell me about the food here. It's everyday basic Mexican food, is what I like to say. It's nothing elevated. We've got a huge variety of things in the in the deli and in the grab and go that people can take home and give their family a meal that feels like my mom cooked it yeah. for them or like a tia, an auntie cooked it for them. In essence, if you strip everything down, it's still a mom taking care of her kids, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And now her exactly. kids is the community. When my parents started the food, they did just tamales and car carnitas. And then my mom started doing little small wrap, pre-wrapped burritos that you could just heat up in a microwave, you know, take home and eat it at home. From there, of course, we've grown, but never changing kind of those recipes. And if we do, we hear about it from our mom. Yeah. <laughs> she'll be, she'll walk right in that kitchen yeah. with her plate and be like, this is not my recipe. Did you change this recipe? Yeah. I'd be like, no, Espanol. <laughs> That's what I would be like, oh, no. When they moved to this location, they implemented a full kitchen. And that's when she went all, all out with her mole, the tamales, and guisados. And guisado is basically um, a food that is made of either a combination of beef, pork, chicken, sometimes seafood, a lot of vegetables. And it's cooked in a, like a stew, and it's made with chiles, spices, red, green. And then you can use that as a base for you can just eat it with rice and beans or just by itself. Well, that sounds delicious. Let's go cook. We're cooking a guisado with cactus. Nopal, okay. nopalitos. Some people think cactus is just a plant in the middle of your coffee table. <laughs> so talk us through this. We're gonna work with the cactus paddle. We're gonna make it in a guisado. It also comes prepared in cans, in jars. You would rinse that in a, and strain it, and then it's also ready to eat just like that in a salad, fry it up with eggs, and you've got a great meal. I love it fresh. And part of my connection with it, and I love it, is it's historic. I mean, it's cactus. So have you done this before? Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, me too, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And whoa, 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 okay, wait. So, Grab oh, it carefully okay. from the knob. Here we okay. go. Try and avoid the slivers, the little I've... pricklies. And then how do you clean this? So a very sharp knife. You do it away from you. Oh, you scrape it? I kind of start scraping first okay. to see if I can get anything up because there's all these little black mm. points. This makes me just think of like itching my back, like, oh yeah, this is bad. <laughs> oh yeah. You can find it at most mercados already 
peeled and chopped up. It's... Somebody already went through the pain. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can smell it right away. Mm, oh, it smells so yeah. fresh, right? Yeah. So Melissa, like you went to college, mm -hmm. kind of had this pathway of like, I got out. Right? Yeah. No more stuffing beans in yeah. bags anymore. No more no. late night, you know, deliveries. Yeah. Like you yeah. got out. Yeah. What made you come back? So I tried corporate in politics and I did nonprofits. And I'm glad I had all of those experiences, but there's something that was always missing. So if you were gonna grill this, mm -hmm. we would just slice it like this. Okay. Like make like little fingers on it. Mm -hmm. And this way the, it just cooks easier into all the way inside. And you'll start to see that slimy, mucusy baba. Baba, because it sounds better if you say yes, baba. Yes, let's just say baba. It's, it's cute, it's like it's a little cute. kid, baba. Yeah. <laughs> and it was that, that being um, connected to my culture. Um, even though I was first generation born here, but I was raised in a mercado. I was raised in a community where we spoke Spanish and I was working with Latinos every day. It makes me think a lot of Hmong village where my mom goes. The fact that she went in and she could speak her own language mm -hmm. and she feel like a stranger mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, it's that connection with, with the people and the food and the community. And I love that part. I just love the experience part and the teaching part about our culture. You know, I'm not an expert on everything by any means, but I love, I love what I know about my culture and I want to learn more and I love sharing that with people. And I love that the business provides that opportunity. I remember, like my grandma used to make guisados and she would like, she always put nopal in it. We're introducing it to my daughters and they introduce it to their friends now. And they're, it's, it's an ingredient that I think we're just really proud of. It's so basic in Mexican cooking and it's like, you can't mess it up. There's no right or wrong way to do what we're doing. It's, you know, like any vegetable or any fruit. And even though this is a fruit, we eat it like a vegetable. Have you tried it raw just like that? Oh yeah, like fresh green. Refreshing, right? Yes, it is. And I can see what you mean by like, it absorbs whatever flavor you're cooking it with. Yeah. yeah. I'm a huge believer that when we're talking about addressing racism and discrimination, just by sharing food, talking about our experiences, we find how much we're not so different. Yeah, like we yeah, just did. Yeah, we just did. So it's all of those things that kind of brought me back to wanting to be on the West Side, in St. Paul, in El Burrito, where my family immigrated to and placed their roots. So we're gonna cook the nopalitos now in a pot, no oil, nada. The baba will start bubbling and it'll eventually evaporate. Some people put a fresh tomatillo peeling mm -hmm. in there as well. I think they think it's gonna cook faster, but I've tried it and it's the same time. And my mom said my grandma would put a dime in there when she would cook it. It's like interesting. But I think that those are the stories that you don't get from reading a you know recipe. Yeah. 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 I would check it out again. Oh. See now we're seeing the bubbles. What does baba translate to? Slime. Goober. Oh. <laughs> Goober. Is goober a word? It almost looks like string beans. Yeah. Or as the French call, her hover. I think we're done. Oh, and that's it? Congratulations, you made the panes. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna make a guisado. We are going to put some oil, saute some onion, and add this salsa, and then stir the chopped up cactus, and oh. dinner is ready. And then we're gonna add, pour that into our little pork riblets. I think what's really delicious about this is all of that deep, rich flavor is gonna cut through that pork. Yes. Every family and every region has its own recipe. Your version of a guisado of pork in salsa verde might have potatoes and might have, you know, another vegetable in it, corn or something, and mine won't. You know, it's just, and to your point, it's because it's what's available to make that meal. It actually really tells the story of the family. Buen provecho. Si. <laughs> that means to your health. Oh, okay. Yes, to your health. And that means yes. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> si, si. Mm. The cactus texture reminds me of long beans or wax beans. Mm-hmm. Just a tiny bit of crunch. Mm-hmm. 
Melissa, what does it mean for you to bring a little bit of home to all the people who come through El Burrito? I feel like that interaction of family and community and coming in and getting their flavors from home, that they come in, I mean, there's people have broken down crying. Like, mm. they, they find an ingredient that they haven't seen in forever, and they're like, oh my God, I've been looking for this forever. I'm so glad that you have this. I'm paying homage to my parents. I get emotional even just thinking about um, stories of my, of my parents helping, you know, young people that were going through hard times and they gave them food, they gave them jobs. It's truly family for me, being at El Burrito, so. Hearing your story made me feel not alone. Well, you're family now. Espanol un poquito. Si. <laughs> we'll <laughs> yeah. work on that. Yes. Family recipes weave into the fabric of our identity, helping us tell our unique stories. Whether bottled, packaged, or prepared, there's something truly special about preserving the legacy of our parents' recipes. What's your family recipe you wish you could bottle up or ones you love to share with the world? Whether it's a special sauce or a longtime family favorite, every dish really does tell a story.